Thank you very much, Amna. Um, You're welcome. There's a virtual clap for you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so we'll move on to our next speaker uh, for this morning session. Uh, next speaker is Hulda Swai. Uh, so Hulda, uh, please share your screen and the floor is yours. Okay, great. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, it's good afternoon here. Thank you all for inviting me. Uh, I'm going to talk on nanomedicine. I'm not a, a physicist, so my talk will be more of more biomedical sciences, which is my specialty. So, I mainly, I mainly need to define what nanomedicine is. Uh, it's actually about manipulation of matters at the atomic level. And since I'm going to focus on nanomedicine, it will be application of nanotechnology in health, diagnostics, and monitoring of diseases. I won't go into detail on diagnosis and monitoring of disease because I want to talk about the old tumble uh, chair, which is nanomedicine in malaria. Uh, which I, th I think is more important for me at this moment. Okay, uh, the, what makes nanomedicine or nanotechnology very important is the size. So we are talking about the size of a virus, as you can see here. Uh, let me see. This. Yeah, the size is, is around 100 nanometers. So it's a, a size of a virus. Hence, you can deliver things intracellularly and uh, uh, Whatever you are delivering, if it is a drug, it can actually uh, go through the epithelial wall very easily because of the size. It can cross all the biolog biological barrier. So, again, what, what size are we talking about? So, is 0.1% of uh, human hair, yes, meaning how, how, how small it is, or rather 1% of the smallest human cell. So, the, the potency of nanomedicine is a size and the fact that it can cross all the biological barrier very, very easily. So solubility is not an issue anymore. And also the bioavailability improves sometimes even 10 times. So drugs which were, 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 were toxic, uh, when they are refor reformulated in nanomedicine, they are no longer toxic. Uh, that will come later. That's a typical nanocarrier. Nanocarrier can be a lipid. It can be a, a bagarable polymer. And inside uh, the, the, the core, one can, can put a drug. You can also attach a, a ligand, which is a, which can actually direct the drug to go where it's supposed to go. Uh, let, let's say if, if you, it's a cancer uh, uh, patient, the, the receptor can go to where the, the a pro, a certain protein is overexpressed. So the ligand can be chosen in such a way that it can just zoom to where it's supposed to go. By doing that, you, you, you use less drug and you actually target the cells which are, are, are sick, which are cancerous. As, as such, the toxicity is minimal. And uh, the drug which was, because most of the uh, cancer drugs are very potent, but they're also very toxic. So because of the, the reduced dose or the targeting uh, ability, one reduces the dose up to maybe the only 10%. So that's uh, the, the exciting, I think about nano medicine, and that's what uh, that's what makes the, all the difference. And also, one can can actually uh, code it with for fluorescence, and you can be able to monitor it by confocal microscope and see exactly where the particle is. In that in that way, you can actually uh, diagnose where the cancer is or whatever disease is by by using the, the fluorescence uh, nanoparticles. So in such a way, you can do diagnostics, you can image, you can follow up, you can be able to follow the, the progress of that disease. Uh, so a lot of drugs have not been able to uh, get to the market and one wonders why. And when we look at this picture here, it's mainly the PK, that, that, that is the drug is not able to, to cross the, the epithelial wall to go to the, to the, to the mainstream or they are, they, they, are, they are digested or they are denatured in, in the main stomach or in the liver. 
But when you, they're encapsulated, for example, with lipids, they can bypass the liver without being degraded and able to go into the bloodstream and especially if they're targeted, go to where they're targeted. So a, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical industries now are going back to drugs which failed and look into what was the problem. And uh, for example, like this uh, diagram here, if, it, if it's a problem with half-life or toxicity or dose or dose frequency, this can only, can, all of this can be addressed by using nano medicine or nano carriers. So that's what nano carriers can do. So I want this, you to use this technology to come up with a new and familiar drugs. We've got so many herbal extract here in Tanzania, which works, but it means taking a cup of, uh, of a concussion and which is not, is not uh, nice. And most of them are very bitter, but with nanoscience, we believe we can come from a, a cup of uh, concussion to a drug or a tablet. So that, that's what the old Samba award uh, will do. Oh, yeah. Am I audible enough? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, hold on. You're, you're, you're fine. The, just, yeah. just for all the participants, make sure you're, you're, you're muted, please. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just going to take you through a quick uh, clip on, on, on Otambo Award, which explains everything. It's only, I think, three to four minutes. And then, then I'll, I'll, I'll finish after that. <laughs> I'm a professor in nanoscience here in Nelson Mandela Institute of Science and Technology, Arusha, in Tanzania. It is a great honor to receive the Oliver Tambo Award after a very stiff competition involving 50 very senior and distinguished professors in Africa. I'm excited to be one of the 10 professors, and indeed, this is the highlight of my profession. My main aim of this research is use nanotechnology technology to develop new anti-malaria drugs using the potent herbal extract as well as the existing malaria drugs which has poor availability. Nanotechnology will address all the shortcomings. Malaria is one of the world, world's deadliest infectious disease. Around 2 million people are infected every year and half a million die of malaria each year. Sadly, 90% of the death occurs in Sub-Saharan Africa, and a child dies every 12 seconds. Let me repeat, a child dies of malaria every 12 seconds. Currently, there's no effective vaccine for malaria. The earliest drug discovered for malaria is quinine, which was discovered in 1820. But this drug has shown a lot of side effects and is not popular anymore. The successor was chloroquine. Chloroquine was very potent for years, but it is now already suffered resistant. The parasite is resistant to chloroquine. So chloroquine has been withdrawn. Presently, Artemisia, a herbal compound, is the only potent anti-malaria drug. However, resistance has already been reported in Cambodia and Southern Asia. In summary, all anti-malaria drugs available today are challenged by poor availability, short half-life, and toxicity as well. As such, there is a need of addressing these shortcomings as well as, well as developing new and malaria drugs. Nanotechnology has revolutionized medicine due to its ability to improve the bioavailability of this compound by increasing solubility, reducing toxicity, and improve dose and dose frequency. This technology will enhance research towards the development of novel anti-malaria drugs from both potent isolated herbal compounds as well as existing drugs which needs optimization. Nanotechnology has been used to revolutionize anti-cancer drugs with very exciting results. A number of cancer drugs could not be commercialized 
because of shortcomings. But with nanotechnology, these drugs are on the market today as we speak. My research will actually involve encapsulating both anti-malaria compounds based on herbal compounds and also the existing anti-malaria which are lacking potence into nanocarriers of nanoscale. Being nanoscale, they can cross all the biological barrier and be able to get into the bloodstream. And moreover, we can actually target these nanocarriers into the disease cells. For example, in malaria, we are talking of red blood cells. So we can target the red blood cells with nanocarrier encapsulated with anti-malaria inside. This will be a, a good opportunity of developing a product, commercialize it. For the first time in the region, we'll be able to come up with our own anti-malaria drug and save millions of lives. The project will also expand the infrastructure, also build the critical mass, which is lacking in form of PhDs and masters in nanoscience and nanotechnology, which will be able to take this technology to another level and in a way will sustain the technology. This is in line with the AU agenda of 2063. We are very passionate on this. Great things are coming. Just watch the space. Uh, so that, that's the old Tambo Award. Uh, and it's a five-year project with three phases. It's up to 15 years if, if one, one performs. And uh, there's various themes. So my theme is malaria, but others have got different themes, uh, depending on, on one's uh, uh, profession. So we believe that uh, this Otambo Award will contribute to uh, excellence in, in research in Africa, as well as prom promote the legacy of Otambo. Uh, so in this case, we've got two compounds here, which are very potent, uh, but they, uh, one, one, is, one, one is toxic and the other one is uh, insoluble. So we believe these two compounds which has been prepared by Professor Malebo, and he has published about them widely. We may, we may be able now to bring them into nanoscience and encapsulate them and uh, be able to uh, come up with a new drug out of the two. There's quite quite a few around, but we're going to start with these two because they're, they're very potent so far. That the only thing is that they, they, they have this toxicity and, and problems of, of solubility. So that's what I, I'll, I'll touch on. Uh, yeah, that's the bit about malaria. So uh, there's very various way of protecting myself, but like the mosquito net, normally the malaria parasite, the, 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 the mosquito which carries malaria, normally bites you between uh, five o'clock and seven o'clock. At that time you're not in the net, you're still outside. So it is, mostly it doesn't help. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the most of the drugs are not potent. And what we need is to develop new drugs from the existing local herbal anti-malarias, enhancing the efficacy, as I said already in the, in the slide, and mitigate the, the development of drug resistance. Because the problem with, they come up with a drug, but a few years later, uh, they end up with uh, uh, resistance. So those are drugs which are in the, in the market, but all of them are, are lacking one way or two. So I'm new to the time, I won't go through each and every one of them, but it's all about half-life, it's about poor, poor availability, solubility. Yeah. Uh, so with malaria, there's three cycles where, where we can interrupt the, 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 the parasite. The first cycle is uh, when, the, when one is bitten by the mosquito, but the second cycle is, is when the, the, the parasite is in the liver. It normally stays for two weeks incubating the liver before it comes out. And at this point, one is not sick. So if you, we, we can, uh, I'm, I'm told that there's some proteins which are expressed when the parasite is in, in the liver. So if you can 
identify those proteins and, and find a ligand and, and uh, target the, 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 the parasite in the liver stage, we may be able actually to eradicate malaria altogether. Otherwise, if it comes out of the liver, then it goes to the bloodstream. Blood and when it goes to the bloodstream, as you can see here, it goes to the red blood cells in the, here is one which is infected. And after a while, they, are, they, they burst up, then the parasites are all over looking for another cell. And one here is sick and very feverish. And that's why one, if you are not uh, treated, one can die. So we are looking in a way of targeting either in the liver or outside the liver, outside, outside the liver. but all in all, we want a drug which can be very effective and uh, maybe, maybe not one, two or three or four, because if, if you, when he's having only one drug, it is very worrying, it's anything can happen with the registers coming up. That's just the detail of the cycle of uh, uh, malaria. I'm not going to detail because maybe I'm, I lose most of you. So you, we can, like here is in the liver stage, here you in the blood, red blood cells. So when-, when yeah, You have about the, four, you have four minutes left. Okay. So what, for example, when it's in the, in the red blood cells, the, the, the pH is, is, is very high. So one can touch it through pH. Uh, there's some proteins which are expressed here in the liver. So all that can be tar targeted. So when you went in CSI, where I worked for, for years on, on nanoscience and nanomedicine, uh, we were given a drug called tefenoquine by, by Novartis. And we were able to improve the uh, availability from 55% to, to 99. And this drug was no longer toxic because it was cardiotoxicity at the level of, of, of uh, the, uh, the level of, of administering it. But by reducing the level, I mean, the, by improving the availability, we could only uh, give the, the patient 50% of the drug. So it's such like the drug was no longer uh, 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 toxic. So they were able to, to commercialize it. I don't know how far they've gone, but when I was there, they were talking about commercializing it because of the reduced hypo, uh, cardiotoxicity. So that's what Nano can do. Yeah. So we want uh, a, a, even a, a drug which can be slow released, we can coat it with chitosan or by, by great polymers and release it slowly rather than taking it daily. One can take it once a week. Those are options. Uh, we'll be looking at. Uh, the, this is just a typical example of, of uh, doxorubicin, which is a cancer drug, which by putting it in, uh, into nano carriers, the half-life was improved from two to three hours, up to 50 to 80 hours. So you can see what a nano, nano carrier, nano medicine can do, that the half-life can be improved tremendously, meaning that the drug will be longer in the, in the bloodstream and more effective. Uh, I'm just finishing. This is just a uh, drug, it's a, drug called Paxil uh, or Abrexilin when it's in nano. Here it was in so, almost insoluble, but by putting it into nano carrier, the solubility was increased seven times, as you can see from 2000 to, to, to 14,000. So that's what the nano carrier can, nano uh, medicine can do to drugs. So we are using this technology, we'll be using this technology for, uh, for multi-malaria. This is the final one, uh, quickly. This mice here was given what, one milligram a day for two weeks, and this was given 100 microgram once every three days. At the end of the day, they were all uh, they're all free of, of uh, intraconazole, but when you look at them, the, the, the one here is, is actually sickly, and this one is, is, is well, and uh, it looks healthy meaning that it, there was less drug, but more by availability. Here, the drug was, was, was there, but of course, poor by availability. So most of the drug ended up into, into the kidneys and uh, the, the liver and the kidney it has to work over time to get rid of the extra drug because of the poor by availability. But here, the drug was targeted and it, it was able to go directly to where it was needed. Yeah, I think that's my last, last slide. And uh, I believe that working with ICTP, we can, we can come up with a collaboration whereby we can use some of your techniques because what we want to come up with at the end of the day is a new anti-malaria drugs, which, is, which can address the problem we have in the tropics. Thank you very much for listening.
I hope I was not too fast. Thank you very much, Hulda, for this very inspiring talk. Um, the floor is open for questions. We have uh, about four minutes. So uh, if you want to ask a question, again, please write in the chat. Or if you want, you can raise your hand and, uh, and ask the question yourself. OK. Um, Meniko has a question for you. Um, I guess it was a bit of a long question. Are you, uh, so uh, let me try. Uh, Meniko, do you want to unmute yeah. yourself and ask it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, I think we can keep it for the uh, discussion, but it's very quickly is talking about bioavailability. We, mm -hmm. I think we tend to forget that um, uh, we, we could also be, it could also be interesting to make insecticides or transmission blocking drugs bioavailable to the mosquito. So readapt this technology and these ideas, not to target you know, uh, uh, drugs to treat malaria in the vertebrate host, but to better deliver, especially exploiting the hydrophobicity of the nanoparticles, so attached to the bed net, insecticides or better defined transmission blocking drugs to the mosquito. It would be something like making more um, insecticide more effective and less toxic because they will be delivered specifically to the other organism. Just uh, for the sake of discussion, I, I don't think anybody is actually working on this because it looks like high technology to tackle mosquito. Why this high technology and costly technology is better to be spent and invested in the human uh, host. But it would be an idea to think about the other side, uh, vector control over. Uh, we're actually open-minded. The project is starting in January. So we're looking into collaborators with various ideas. So the, the idea I, I gave you just one of the ideas, but one is welcome to, to bring other, other ideas. It's a 15 years project, so a lot can be done. Yeah, thank you. Just, just uh, you know, to, to, to enlarge the discussion, not really to suggest to do it, but to think about. Thank you. Thank you, Maniko. Um, are there other questions from the audience? Uh, there's a question from uh, Ken William. He asks, um, does reduced dose frequency necessarily imply under dosage? I'm not sure. Yes, because of the improved bioavailability, um, when you, you put the drug in nanocarrier, the, the bioavailability sometimes improved by 10, up to 10 percent. When I was working at CSIR, we were able to show that uh, the, drug, the bioavailability was improved by 10, 10, 10 times. So but by doing that, definitely you are taking less drug, so it means less to, 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 uh, toxins. And the drug, especially if it's targeted to the, to the sick cells, it won't be available to, to all, all parts of your, 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 your blood, your, your, um, your body, like in the kidneys and everywhere. So it just goes to the where it's needed and attack, and attack the, the, the sick cells and, and that's it. So we believe in less drug, less toxicity. Okay, thank you. Um, any more questions from the audience? Okay, uh, if there are no more questions, thank you.